previously on The Apprentice Asia. It's all about proving to the rest of Asia that Jonathan is the apprentice to beat. I know the man who I want to work for sees something in me. It's down to the final two. One of you will be hired. A woman will never... As Andrea and Jonathan face off to become Mr. Fernandez's apprentice. How can you not fight 200% for that? Tasked to organize a charity black tie fundraiser for the Air Asia Foundation. Reinforcements were brought back to help them out. When I saw everyone, I felt a jolt of surprise and happiness. In a calculated move, Jonathan picked Queen of Hospitality, Selena, for his team. Selena is the only candidate that I haven't worked with. I knew it was a risk picking her. Everything that we're going to use as accents are going to be colorful. colorful. But the dynamics just so, you know, outrageously smooth. For Andrea, being reunited with Ninku gave her a boost of confidence. Ninku, she's like the second PM. That's yeah, really that's awesome. good. That's really good. While both teams scrambled to prepare for D-Day, the daunting task of organizing the biggest event of Andrea's life reached a boiling point. Um, it... Tonight it is our privilege to have all of you in attendance. I don't believe you when you say those things right now. Now, only one question remains. Who will get ahead awesome! and cross the finish line as the first ever Apprentice Asian? probably the biggest day of my life. Whatever happens in tonight's event, it will determine whether I win The Apprentice and I am gunning for everything that I can. Going into today's event, I'm feeling a lot of trepidation. Um, this is by far one of the biggest things I've done and um, I know there's a lot at stake, so I'm just crossed fingers and hoping that the event is going to run really, really smoothly. This task probably is the biggest task we've ever been asked to do. It will cover 100 guests, VIPs who have a lot of high taste. We want to make sure that when they enter the room, they feel well, well respected. That kind of hospitality that they are demanding. Good evening, sir. Oh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Jonathan. Nice to see you. Yeah, Hi. nice to see you. Hi, Sam. 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 Hi, Sam.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jonathan. Southeast Asia is a country of rich and diverse region of culture, of people, and sadly to say, a lot of these communities today are in danger of either being destroyed or being forgotten in the pages of history. And precisely that cause, ladies and gentlemen, is the reason why the Air Asia Foundation has been created. This is really about Air Asia's foundation and about the Asian countries. So we really wanted to make sure that was highlighted and that Jonathan came in just as a, an ambassador of the foundation and really represent them properly. Our two boards here flanking me, they are our advocacy boards because we do want to document a historic night of you being passionate to become part of that cause for Air Asia Foundation. That wall is actually intended as, thank you for not saying I don't care. A standee that breaks the barriers and makes it more avant-garde. People would expect the straightforward things, but when they get provoked that it's something else, it gets their attention. Thank you for not saying I don't care. It means I really care. Thank you so much, guys. Can I draw instead? Go ahead. <laughs> what I think Tim John could have done better was that he had a good idea to get people up to the boards to sign, but I didn't like the fact that he used a lot of negatives. I think the message should be positive as opposed to a negative message. Just a small way of saying thank you for coming in support of the foundation. It's made by the hotel. They were used with um, nuts from the Asian region. Wow. I think the team's actually working very well. Very well. I think I, I picked the best team. So Jonathan has picked people who A, will do a great job, but B are actually out there to make sure that he wins. He's done that superbly. Pulled off the reception, ambiance was good, the entire team were actually working the room, talking to people, absolute first class room. We propose this toast for Air Asia Foundation because in the end we know that inspiration sparks hope and hope sparks action and action sparks change and that in being part of Air Asia Foundation, may you all have a meaningful night. Cheers to everyone. Yeah. We would like to thank the Double Tree Hotel, partners for the Hilton Properties Worldwide, for being our partners in this event. See you all in the auction. Again, this is Team Jonathan, and thank you for tonight. Really went well, very smooth. It was exactly how you imagine it, and I think we've really touched the hearts of the guests. Right, um, this, oh, this is the A team. Jonathan. All right. Okay, just welcome them. Hi, good evening, sir. Good evening. When how are you? I start you? my speech, though. Huh? Hi, good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. I was extremely nervous at the cocktail event. The speech was, you know, something I struggled with for this entire time, but I just sort of reworked it and really made it my own. Whether I succeed or fail tonight, it's going to turn on that. Hi. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Do we wait for them to come here? Good evening. Andrea is looking very nervous. I don't know why she asks last minute question that can be answered by themselves. I'm like, what is this? Do you want me to slap it out of you? You know, get real here. It's unnecessary to self-doubt yourself in a point where you need to, like, laser this. speech was not an easy, it really was not easy. What was difficult is when I started talking, all the other guests were talking as well. Obviously in my mind, I was thinking once I said, good evening ladies and gentlemen, everyone would magically listen to me, but that didn't happen at all. Uh, my name is Andrea, um, and tonight I'd like to welcome you to our event. Um, this evening marks 
first year of the Air Asia Foundation's operations. So I'm really excited to welcome all of you this evening. The words that I had penned were very, very meaningful. But just when you don't have everyone's full attention, it can be quite difficult. Um, and I had to remind myself to just not be discouraged, even though I could see with my own eyes that people were talking to each other. Tonight, we have a momentous opportunity to come together and each play a part in our young community for the future. Andra's cocktail event was a little bit disorganised. I think she is nervous. She was reading from the script. She was not getting the attention at all by the guests. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you will get to learn more about these five projects that the Air Asia Foundation is involved in and really find a cause that you would like to support. And I wish all of you a very, very pleasant evening ahead. Thank you very much. Please enjoy this evening. Andrea, she just went along with it and, and focused on like delivering a good message, you know, and at the end of the day, I feel like she, she did a good job. It's a 10 kilowatt turbine, and the average Malaysian household actually uses up 5 kilowatts of energy every month. Okay. That same amount is being used to power 22 households. We also have Mr. To uh, Mr. Fernandez's personal watch collection, yes. you know, it's very precious to him, but he's been kind enough because he believes in these causes, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Nice massages and all that thrown into the, into the whole package. So well, I like <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend will love this. It's how the four of us, the team, interact with um, the guests. And that's really, really, really important for this event. You know, more importantly, given the specific information on the auction items, as well as the, the various projects that they're meant to support. The foundation has done an amazing job. Uh, one year that they, they're up, and they've already accomplished so much. Very nice to meet you. I hope you've been having a good evening so far. Andrea's party, the first thing that struck me was I like the visuals. You go in, you knew immediately it was a foundation affair. You see the visuals, uh, you see the logo. She picked the right projects, and she really grabs your attention because um, she spoke a lot more convincingly. And I would love to tell you I can go under it, but we're going to start at 25000 this evening. And I like chatting with people, so that was really nice. And I think more importantly, the crowd was very receptive to everything that we had to say. And that part, in my opinion, it went very well. Next is the auction. I'm very excited. I'm wearing now my tie and I can't wait to show our bids. I think it's going to be a very exciting night. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Are you all ready for a good cost tonight? Yeah! All right. Tonight, Team Jonathan, well, that's me. Um, has prepared to you a fine selection of really good cost items. In the meantime, I would also like to introduce my colleagues who have helped me along the way in this journey. On my right side is the very beautiful Selena, also from the Philippines. <laughs> Unfortunately, Selena has been fired by Mr. Tony Fernandez, <laughs> but, but isn't she on fire tonight, right? <laughs> Please welcome Mr. Nazril from Malaysia. Mr. Sam the Man from India. All right? The three of them will be helping me tonight in this auction. I really felt I could have never chosen the best batch ever. These are the people who believe in me, who always rooted for me. Really makes you confident. Our first bid is something close to Mr. Tony Fernandez's heart. We are talking about a his and her skater am shirts autographed by the team drivers themselves. And we'll be starting this bid at 5,000 ringgit. Do I hear a 5,000 on the floor, ladies and gentlemen? 5,000 from the gentleman with the red tie. 5,600, please. Caterham shirts. All right, thank you. The gentleman in the blue tie. How about a 6,200 ringgit? 
6,000. Oops. With so much excitement, the guy in the red tie again at 6,200. Thank you, sir. I love this auction. I feel like I was the star of the night, you know, just talking, babbling, shouting. It's really ridiculous. All right, thank you, sir. 6,800. Will anyone challenge that? 7,200. All right, thank you, sir. It's getting very heated out here. This man is slick. This is a totally different Jonathan. Very, very impressive. This man is in it to win it. Something very personal as well for my heart because I come from this country is that you can become a patron of rags to riches in the Philippines. For a minimum bid of 15,000 ringgit, you will be allowed to contribute that amount of money for the education and training of the men and women in this enterprise. John's auction, he did well as an auctioneer, but I felt that he was too uh, risk-averse in his choices. He chose the lower price projects. I think he should have taken a little bit more risk on the projects. We are looking at a holiday for two to Maldives. The minimum bid is only 15,000 ringgit, and I must say, it's a steal. Someone is already bidding for that. Let's look at 40,000 if that's the case. 40,000 ringgit. Let's look at 43,000 if someone would like to raise. Thank you, sir, at 43,000. Will someone want to challenge at 53,000? 53,000, thank you, sir. Going once at 53,000. Going twice at 53,000. All right, sir, you got it. Thank you. Sold for 53,000. All right, wow, I was so excited with that paddle. Thank you. Again, on behalf of Team Jonathan, we hope you had a fun night. Thank you. In this task, you need to be very genuine when it comes to mingling and networking with the guests. And I think I did a pretty good job as far as connecting to them and making them sure that they know what the AirAsia Foundation is. Nice Thank job. You. Nice oh, job. I know. Good job. Great job. because I figured I could just be myself more so than during the welcome speech. All I needed to do for the auction was to really be enthusiastic and really be myself. Hi, a very good evening again, ladies and gentlemen. Distinguished guests, Mr. Fernandez, um, the trustees of the AirAsia Foundation. Okay, so let's get this show on the road. Um, is everyone ready for some to do some charity? Awesome. Okay, we're going to start off with our first item tonight, everyone. This is from Mr. Fernandez's personal watch collection. So we're going to start the bidding at 15,000 ringgit. Anyone for this watch. Okay, I see the lady over there at 16,000 ringgit. And over there, number 75, 17,000 ringgit. How about you, sir, with the glasses? Five. That will be... 17,000 ringgit. Can you help me? Can you help me with accounting? Because I'm really bad at accounting. Yeah. I had a bit of trouble remembering the amounts that we were at because people were bidding very quickly. So it was very good to have Ninku there as my assistant. And I would just turn to her and check with her on the amount. Thank you, sir. Number 15 at 18,000 18, ringgit. Okay, I see the lady over there. 19,000. Andrea. Andrea. Then we have a lady, number 33, at 21,000 ringgit. That's absolutely fantastic. Anyone else? 20,000. 21. 21,000. Yeah. 21,000. Andrea wasn't very good at auctioning. Um, she fudged the numbers a little. There was a bit of a kind of dull moments in between. Nico. Nico. Tell her to announce the price before. Tell her to announce the price before. She needs to, she needs to announce the price. Because she's not announcing the price. And we had, you know, she was not mentioning the prices, you know, so like, it was a bit awkward because people didn't know, like when they were raising, they didn't know for what price they were raising. Instead of going by 1,000, 1,000 each time, I would have just raised like five or 10,000 when you feel that, like, you know, people are like ready to bet more. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Richard Branson charity flight. I've heard lots of people talking about this earlier on at the cocktail event. This is an absolute once in a lifetime opportunity to be served by, by Sir Richard Branson. There we go, Sir. What is it? 26. 
Andrea's performance lacks professionalism and she was too casual in the way she communicated her messaging. These are distinguished guests, people who are from the high society. There is a certain manner she should conduct of the way she carries herself, the way she talks. Get the taste of the high life while being served. But the credit to her is she picked good items that are very high ticket prices that appeal to the guests. Anyone, ladies? There we go, sir, again. More than a hundred thousand ringgit. One thirty. One thirty to bid number three. Excellent response. Thank you so very much, sir. That's wonderful. There we go. Four hundred thousand. Thank you very much. Going once. Going twice. And sold to the Indonesian gentleman for four hundred thousand. Big round of applause. For your support, ladies and gentlemen. This is the end of our auction. Thank you once again. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for your support. The auction went excellently and the crowd responded very, very, very positively and favourably. I feel we ran a very successful event. We made up a big majority of the total amount raised. And even though we're not judged on that, it's all for a good cause. And um, I, I think it's a good indicator of which team did well. said and done. I'm, I'm really, really, really glad. Tomorrow, it's D-Day. Jonathan and I are going to go into our final, final boardroom. And um, not only is someone going to get fired, like usual, but someone's going to get hired. this because I love doing the job and when you love your job you're at your best I want to become like Mr. Tony Fernandez and I want a life following the same kinds of visions and philosophy that he had and I think those are the reasons why I deserve this position I have much more heart than Jonathan has when it comes to putting my all into everything I do I don't just do it because I want to win I do things because I believe in them and that means very much to me and I'm really, really hoping, fingers crossed, it's going to be me. We're down to the final two. Jonathan from the Philippines, who is a dynamic young man. And Andrea from Singapore. It's been an amazing process. This is the final event before I choose uh, the person who's going to be my apprentice. Thank you very much for coming, and I truly appreciate all of you coming. Thanks very much. to the boardroom now. Mr. Fernandez is ready for you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Good evening Mr. Fernandez. Welcome back. Thank you. Many familiar faces here today. Reminds me of the many times I had to fire you. 
but today I'll be hiring someone. And that someone is one of the two project managers sitting in front of me, two of our youngest and strongest candidates. It's a competition between drive and passion. Andrea, what was your strategy in picking the teams? Well, I, I knew already who I wanted, and I went for the people that not only had energy and talent, but also people who I felt that were genuinely rooting for me, because I think your personal relationships do make a difference. You feel you have the stronger team? Absolutely. That's a very definitive answer, Jonathan. A bit cocky. Mm -hmm. yeah. As usual. <laughs> As usual. <laughs> but I already know Andrea that way. Yeah. I love her for that. <laughs> What was your strategy in picking the teams? I picked two things. One is who would root for me to win The Apprentice? And definitely these three people vocalized those things for me, even from the very start. Nas, for example, when he left, he gave me this note telling, I want you, Jonathan, to win The Apprentice because I believe in you. And that really boosted my confidence. Sam approached me and said, Jonathan, I want you to be The Apprentice. Selena, obviously, from the very start. And if you look at these three people, I couldn't have chosen the perfect A-team to execute the perfect event for the Air Asia Foundation, sir. Okay. Selena, it's interesting that although John and you have never worked together, John, that you still picked Selena over Deanne. You know, I felt that she, at so many moments, she was my right hand. In this task, when it's all about food, beverage, hospitality, and I think she was the best pick. And I just have to add, the reason why I chose her as my third was because none from this team would probably want to pick her. I chose Sam first because he was in danger of being taken by Andrea. That was my entire logic, and I think it was a very smart decision in the end. Okay. Andrea, maybe you can give me some insight into why you said absolutely you have the best team. Jonathan's obviously put a lot of thought into uh, what he's going to say, but for me, it was so simple. So throughout this process, there's always been a very deep personal connection to each of them. With Dian, like, honestly, I call her mum. I think that maternal side of her was something that I could really count on mm -hmm. in the task, you know. We had left off previously, not on the best of terms, but that was not even an issue, just because I knew we had that personal relationship. Um, with Ninku and Alex, not even a question. Like, I knew I wanted them right from the very beginning. There's a lot of mutual respect and there's a lot of love um, all in the team. And it was very, very clear to me. It wasn't just about talent and ability. I think they've already proven that, so... Um, and these are people that will come through for me, and that's all that I needed. Okay. Selena, how do you think Jonathan managed you guys? I think Jonathan was really showing all the skills of not only a great leader today, but a future great leader. He mm -hmm. really has the capacity to empower people and drive them and give them what they need to do what he wants them to do. I got the entire sense that he trusted. Did I ask you, sir? <laughs> <laughs> now you know why you were fired. <laughs> Mash. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, Sam. <laughs> Go on, Sam. Uh, I got the sense that he completely respected me and respected everything I had to say and offer and put on the table. So uh, that felt very good for me. And then uh, his total trust, uh, that was definitely uh, worth, worth the mention. That's the shortest answer you have ever given me. You're still fired. <laughs> okay. Ninku, how do you think Andrea managed? the team. So you said earlier that Andrea is very driven, but I just saw a very, very passionate side of her yesterday, which really came through at the auction as well. She made sure that the whole brief was absolutely adhered to. I think it was a really fantastic job. Alex. I felt that she, she did an amazing job, not only in leading, but as well in creating a, a, an amazing environment for us to work. I haven't worked with Ninku and India in the past, and, uh, and I really felt that, you know, she as well put a lot of efforts into, like, making me feel like you know I was uh, you know part of the team and as well make me understand how the other teammates worked. I mean I was very impressed. Sir. I think she really deserves to win. So. It's interesting for me to see how much energy you can get out and motivate. I was watching very very carefully. Alexis, who do you think would be my better apprentice? Uh, without any doubt, Andrea, sir. Not not even a, the beginning of a doubt, sir. Why? Well, because I think uh, it's not only on the last task, but throughout the competition, uh, I really believe that she's shown the, the versatility, she's shown the passion, she's shown the leadership. So you think she's a stronger leader than Jonathan? Yes, sir. When you're a leader, sir, uh, you're the person who's taking all the pressure, and I feel that throughout the process, you know, she's never been scared of this, when uh, Jonathan hasn't tried to step up to, to show you more on that aspect. 
Okay, Sam, who would you pick? I would root for Jonathan because right from the fish task until now, he's shown that consistency that you know you were looking for. He's a sponge, he will learn and he will apply it in practical life. So for me, consistency is very big. Consistency. Ma, how do they do as project managers? Well, let's talk about Tim Andrea first. I didn't really feel there was great teamwork. The auction clearly was um, all over the place, to be absolutely honest. But your personality shone through there fantastically. Now on John's side, reception, fantastic. All of you were really there to make sure that he won. And I really felt that uh, that empowerment came through in a big way. Okay. Kat, what are your thoughts on Andrea as PM? Andrea, she, she is very bright, but I, I saw a bit of nervousness in her, but Andrea did a lot of homework on the Air Asia Foundation, so that gives the guests a lot of awareness as well. Okay, so in Jonathan's case, as a project manager, what did you feel? Throughout the whole task, I observed he's very consistent, but he's not so intense. He was very calm, a bit more relaxed, and that doesn't give the team pressure, and that makes the team want to do things for you. And I think that's also a sign of leadership as well. Okay, let's find out uh, how you both did at the charity auction. Mark, see the results. Well, the Air Asia representatives overall felt that John as PM managed his event really well. Well thought out, refined, um, confident, ran the auction very professionally, However, his picks for his auction items weren't very well thought out in terms of appeal to generate more bidders. As for Andrea, AirAsia representatives felt that despite being much simpler in approach, she related the AirAsia Foundation message on a very personal level, which came through in her delivery at the cocktail event. However, the auction seemed a bit disorganized. Kat, how much did they raise in total? Well, Team Andrea and Team Jonathan collectively raised a total of... ...1,308,900 ringgit for the Air Asia Foundation. On behalf of Air Asia, I give you a round of applause. That's fantastic. Whatever happens in the rest of your life, you can always remember that the eight of you contributed to raising 1.3 million, which will make many people's lives in Southeast Asia a better one. So, to the returning candidates, you're all very talented individuals. You will inspire many, many people in your countries and in Asia. Please continue to inspire, continue to dream. You have inspired me. I've learned so much from all of you. And thank you very much for being in this process and being top class professional. I applaud you all. Now I'd like you all to leave the room. Andrea and Jonathan, I will call you back after I've deliberated with my advisors. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wouldn't have been able to be sitting across the table. Yes. Save me here. I know one of the decisions that you make is going to change somebody's life and it's going to impact us as well. Your apprentice. I look forward to it. Let's bring the final two in. Yes, Mr. Fernandez. Mr. Fernandez is ready for you in the boardroom. You may go in now. Jonathan, one of you will be the first Asian apprentice. As you know, I'm not completely judging this on the task that you just performed, but I'll take into consideration all that you've done. Let's look at the stats. John, you had four team wins, four team losses. You were PM once and lost that time. You were in the bottom three twice. Andrea, you had six team wins and only two team losses. You were PM twice as PM, 
Your team won once and lost once. You were on the bottom three only once. Statistically, Andrea, you are the stronger candidate. What do you have to say about that, John? For me, they're just numbers on paper. These things consider how good you were as far as working with your teams. And even in my losses, I was still the stronger candidate, sir. I felt a lot of the wins that she had were also because of me when she was my teammate in Team Mavericks. And it was always a synergy between the two of us. But in the end, I've always shown my personality, which were both positive and all about passion. I'm not sure if the same thing can be said in the case of Andrea. Andrea, what do you have to say in response to Jonathan's comments? Ultimately, sir, the, the numbers don't lie. And more importantly, I think the statistic that deserves most um, weight is the one about project manager, sir. I never shied away from fighting for that chance. And had I not been in a team with three people who had not yet stepped up to be project manager, sir, I would have done it three times. Um, because that's what leadership is about. And as I told you, I, I did very much want to lead and show you that I can lead. What is your proudest moment throughout this process, Jonathan? I think the last task is my proudest moment. This is the task we're in. Oh my God, like all the three people were so genuine in what they were doing. When I know what's best for people, I bring the best out of it. Andrea, what's your proudest moment? The last task, we really did mean something. Um, not just because I learned more about myself, but what they brought to the table and what I wanted from them was that extra encouragement, and that put me way over the top. They were the ones who encouraged me to, to say, you know what, don't be afraid of this. Even though you may not always believe in yourself, we believe in you, and no nothing could have bought them. That's why I picked them, so, and it was very important for me. What is your honest opinion about Jonathan? In terms of weaknesses, I think one would be a lack of leadership. Jonathan has been always an excellent deputy, wonderful, wonderful right-hand man, but he's afraid to step up to the plate, sir. It's not just because he's only been project manager once, but he's talked about his strengths as in marketing and in branding. And we had so many branding and marketing tasks, but not once did he step up to the plate and say, I'll take the responsibility for all of this. The second weakness of his, I think, is something to do with the heart, sir. He connects well with people, and I think that's a strength. But sometimes, I'm not sure where he's at. I, I don't know if you want to call it being political, but um, I, I consider it a weakness because, with me, you always know where you're at. Honesty of emotions uh, is, is really important because it's about how you relate to people. Jonathan? I have two things. One, I think, is all about positivity. When there's an idea that she doesn't like, she shoots them down and ultimately may not entertain that idea. Her strength may be about decisiveness, but I think that's more because of her dismissiveness as well. The second thing I would like to probably look at is, does Andrea really know what she wants right now? Is she there because she's looking for something else outside law school? Or is she there because she wants to prove that she's simply good and she gets a high out of proving to the rest of the world that she's at the top of it? I'm not sure that the kinds of leadership that Andrea wants. Does she only want to get the job finished? Or does she want to get it finished together with her own people? Why do you think you're a better candidate than Andrea? More passion, more flame from Jonathan. And the reason why I see my vision in you, sir, is because the reason why you're successful in your businesses is because you love doing these things. You don't invest in things that you don't like. And that's the same thing that I do with my own life, sir. You want people who want to work for you because they share the same passion. This kinds of passion is not something that you force into anyone. I don't sure that's the same thing with Andrea. You don't force these things into me because I was born that way, sir. And that, for me, is unmistakably Jonathan in this process. Second thing is leadership. Andre and Alex would always connive with this theory that I've always been tried to, you know, hide around even in marketing tasks. But a great leader is someone who doesn't force himself to say that I should be the best and I should be the one to sit on the throne. A great leader is someone who stands back and says, there might be someone out there who's willing to do this job or who's passionate about this job. You take a step back and you tell that I want to bring the best out of these people. And the reason why I never 
challenged and voiced out in those tries of tasks because I felt it was a waste of time. I felt I didn't have to prove to these people that I'm the best in marketing, even if I knew I was, just to waste 15 minutes of my time saying, hey, I should be the PM. Why would you waste your time on that if you want the team to win? The last thing is all about adaptability and resilience. You can throw me at anything, not only because I'm passionate, but because even if things go wrong, I never lose it. And I never lose it because I have all the inspirations to back me up. And as I've always said, I'm inspired by my people, I'm inspired by my parents, I'm inspired by my family, I'm inspired by the things I have gone through from humble beginnings in my life. Those things never die. You want an apprentice who will always dearly hold on to those values and ideals. Thank you, Jonathan. Andrea, why do you think you will be a better apprentice? First of all, I always play to win. Second of all, I think I've shown a lot more promise and potential than Jonathan has. The right balance of intellect and emotion. I think it's been patently clear from the first task all the way through, sir, that I'm not afraid to just go for it. And, and I truly think that is something that's important, sir. And to say, I want this, and I don't just want to be second best, sir. It's something that, that's that different, that puts you over the top. It's been shown that he's all right. Sitting back, not being project manager, he's all right not taking on that responsibility. But I'm willing to put myself on the line. I'll take the credit, but I'll also take the blame, sir. And that's fearless. And the second point was potential. I truly believe that I've shown that I've got much more potential than Jonathan throughout this entire process. Um, it's a very short time that we have to impress you. And um, I think it is under, in the face of pressure and under such fire that we're really proving who we really are. And the final point, which is the balance of intellect and emotion. I think anyone who wants to be successful in life, you have to have the two. It's not enough to just be clever, even though I pride myself on that. And I think I showed that on the task. Um, emotion's important. <laughs> And I can say today that that last barrier is not there anymore. And that makes me infinitely more powerful. Okay. Kat, who do you think should be my apprentice? Andrea has a lot of potential, but it is a tough world in Air Asia. Too much emotion may not be good in a corporate world as that has huge diversity like Air Asia. Whereas what I feel comfortable about Jonathan is bringing out the best in people. It's not about yourself, it's about the rest of the people, the community that we have in the group. Okay, thank you, Kat. Mark, the role of an apprentice is not only what someone can bring to the table. You will be building a future leader. The person who has got all the capabilities of being a rough diamond, highly, highly smart, but has an enormous amount of, from what I've seen, humility. My vote is with Andrea. Thanks, guys. You've given me no help. <laughs> you are both excellent candidates, and you can both add tremendous value to AirAsia. Andrea, you have changed dramatically as a person. You're still a bit overconfident. That is something we would have to manage, but you have a lot of what it takes to be successful. Jonathan, you have it all. My only concern is, do I see the real Jonathan? My heart is racing like my Formula One team right now. I'm not trying to make you more nervous, but I am nervous myself. This will change one of your lives forever. I came into this room pretty clear who I was going to pick. I'm changing my mind as each of you speak. My decision will probably surprise many people. This will change one of your lives forever. I came into this room pretty clear 
who I was going to pick. I'm changing my mind as each of you speak. My decision will probably surprise many people. It's a tough decision. But on the balance of everything that has been put in front of me, seeing you perform, hearing your passion, hugely successful and in years to come you'll think back at this process and have a little smile well done and thank you you may leave thank you thank you thank you Ken. jonathan you are the first asian apprentice well done thank you sir Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Mark. You will make me proud. I will do, sir. You are a junior me in the making. The whole of the Philippines should be very, very proud of you. Thank you. And I hope that you will inspire many, many millions of young Asians. Welcome to the AirAsia family. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You may leave. And congratulations. Thank you, sir. Just shake your hands. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Welcome, Jonathan. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. So that's it. First Asian apprentice, Mark. All the words have been said. All the work's been done. Cat. Yes. You always liked Jonathan from the very beginning, actually. I'm really proud of the decision you made, and I think he's going to inspire millions of young Asians. I think I'm exploding right now, and there's so much happiness in me. It's all about passion in the end. It's passion that sparks hope and hope that sparks change. And if you never put that flame out, you'll always be at your best. I can't wait to work for Mr. Tony Fernandez and show the rest of the world what I got. And I'm going to make some big changes in the world.